Dubai, the United Arab Emirates, on the same peninsula where the religion of Islam originated. After the country won independence from Britain in 1971, there was massive economic and social change, partly paid for with oil wealth. Hundreds of thousands of Arab and foreign workers took up residency, and expatriates now make up 80% of the population. 54% of expatriates practice a religion that is not Islam, in a country where legislation is based on Islamic law. However, the Emirates provides freedom of worship for all religions. The central government has allowed the establishment of church complexes. The government grants land, but no state funding, although mosques do have this financial right. Evangelical work is also not allowed to try to prevent Muslims turning away from Islam. There is no religion in the Emirates that does not have complete freedom to perform the rituals it wants. All religions have their temples or churches, and we even have some state holidays, Christian holidays, such as Easter. Muslims have no problem here with other religions at all. Abu Dhabi is the political capital of the country, and it's here that we find St. Joseph's Church. The Vatican's representative in the Gulf is based here. We asked Bishop Peter Hinder how this came to be. My predecessor, immediate, who was bishop for 29 years, he uh, took residence right from the beginning here in uh, Abu Dhabi in 1976. And uh, he has made this choice because, uh, first of all, the United Arab Emirates with the ruler Sheikh Syed, the founder of the nation, was very open regarding the Christians and uh, the capital of Abu Dhabi was a good place also to be in touch with the diplomatic missions. Our visit coincided with Good Friday, a good chance to see how much freedom non-Muslims have away from the official statements. We went to St. Mary's Church in Dubai, the first church built here. Mass is held in several languages. I've been here 15 years and I practice my religion in complete tranquility without problems. Even when people here know you're a Christian, they don't take it badly. There's a total feeling of brotherhood between Muslims and Christians, in Dubai especially. However, their bell remains silent. The state may say there is religious freedom, but the bell is not allowed to be rung. The dates and times of mass are announced via emails and SMS. We also visited a Lebanese Christian family that's been living in Dubai for more than 10 years. When some groups here in Dubai called for the boycott of Danish products because of the publication of the Muhammad cartoons, we heard the Imam at Friday prayers using some bad words against Christians. The tone was very harsh. But we couldn't do anything. In the first and second year of living here, I couldn't accept the idea of going to church on Friday instead of Sunday. But now I'm used to it. Friday is the day where I practice my religion and do other stuff. For instance, I got married on Friday and christened my son on Friday. You have to get used to it. Official figures show that about 200 religions exist in the Emirates, 
The Constitution guarantees freedom of worship and assures non-discrimination on the basis of race and religion. I'll tell you about Article 25 in the Emirates Constitution. Everyone is equal before the law, without distinction between citizens of the Union in regard to race, nationality, religious belief or social status. Of course this applies to all residents in the Emirates, whether they're Arabs or non-Arabs. They have the right to practice their religions and their beliefs within the limit of laws allowed in the state. One thing we noticed when travelling around here was a mosque and a church that faced each other. It was easy to identify the mosque by its minarets, but this was not the case for the church. They have to remain more discreet. Well, as, I mean, as far as I know, the difference is the, the <clears throat> if you build a church here, the steeple can't be higher than the minaret at the mosque. That's the only difference as I know of it. Since we are here, we never face any any problem with uh, our religious practices. So always it was the you know free entry to the church, and it was really unbelievable because when you came here, you know, as you said, it is a Muslim party, so we didn't know what to expect, and we found you know like here, without any borders, without any problems, we can go pray and celebrate our traditional holidays. But what about the implications of some European laws relating to Muslims in Europe? We got reaction to Switzerland's referendum on the banning of minarets. When we come now to the specific question of the symbol of the minaret, which is the only thing that has been uh, prohibited by uh, the referendum, it's, uh, according to me, not the best uh, decision. But I think I can live it, as I can live without church uh, clock tower for the churches. If this ban of minarets in Switzerland had not been politicized within the context of the unjust war on Islam, which was announced by Bush senior and then his son, and also adopted by many official entities in the West, it would have been normal for me. Peaceful cohabitation between religions has been the aim here, so it's not only the buildings allowed to reach up to the heavens.